Have you ever experienced a range of emotions, from anger to sadness, from hopelessness to elation? Have you ever been so absorbed in an activity that it felt like a teacher, guiding you through an experience you couldn't quite put into words? Or have you felt another person's pain, even that of a stranger, as if it was your own? These are some of the inner states described in the Buddhist concept of the Ten Worlds. Even when we're feeling good, something can quickly knock us out of that positive state, while something else can lift us out of a negative one. The Ten Worlds represent ten different conditions of life that everyone possesses and experiences from moment to moment. Most people spend the majority of their time moving between the first six conditions, from hell to rapture, which are highly vulnerable to changing circumstances and governed by external influences. The Chinese Buddhist Tian Te developed a system for classifying human experience into these ten states or worlds, based on his reading of the Lotus Sutra in the 6th century. Nichiren adopted and expanded upon this ten worlds teaching, emphasizing the inner, subjective nature of these states. As Nichiren stated, Hell and the Buddha may exist in different places according to some sutras, but upon closer examination, both exist within our five-foot body. This highlights the fact that our internal states shape our experience of the world, regardless of external circumstances. What are the ten worlds? They are ten conditions of life that we all experience from moment to moment. These worlds, ranked from the least to the most desirable, are as follows. Number 1 Hell A condition of suffering where one is devoid of freedom and has very little life force. Without experiencing hell, we could never truly appreciate happiness, and the fear of falling into this condition can motivate us to make positive changes in our lives. Number 2 Hunger a condition characterized by an insatiable desire for food, power, wealth, fame, pleasure, and other material things. While hunger can drive human activity, it can also lead to negative consequences such as greed and selfishness. Number 3 Animality A condition in which one is governed by instinct and has no sense of morality. The positive aspects of animality include intuitive wisdom and the instinct to protect and nurture life. Number 4 Anger A condition in which one is dominated by the selfish ego, competitiveness, and the need to be superior. Anger can also fuel passionate energy and a burning desire for justice. Number 5 Humanity or Tranquility a tranquil state marked by the ability to reason and make calm judgments. However, it is an unstable state that can be easily disrupted. Number 6 Rapture, or Heaven, a temporary state of pleasure experienced when one's desires are fulfilled. This state is easily disrupted by changes in circumstances. The remaining four worlds must be revealed from within one's own life. Number 7 Learning A condition in which one seeks self-improvement and lasting truth through the teachings of others. Number 8 Realization or Absorption A state in which one discovers a partial truth through one's own observations, efforts, and concentration. People in these states can become arrogant and self-centered. Number 9 Bodhisattva a condition in which one aspires not only for personal enlightenment but also devotes oneself to relieving the suffering of others through compassionate and altruistic actions. However, this state can also have negative aspects such as self-sacrifice and acting out of a sense of duty or resentment. Number 10 Buddhahood The highest state of life where one has achieved complete enlightenment and embodies the highest wisdom, compassion, and courage. Buddhahood is considered to be the ultimate state of the Ten Worlds, a state of pure and indestructible happiness that is not influenced by one's circumstances. It is a state of absolute freedom, marked by limitless wisdom, courage, compassion, and life force. 
Each of the ten worlds encompasses all ten worlds and has the potential to reveal any of the others at any given moment. Therefore, we can reveal our Buddhahood from the very first moment we start chanting. As we continue to practice, we make Buddhahood the dominant state of our lives, acting as a filter that reveals the positive aspects of the other nine worlds, from hell to bodhisattva. Throughout the day, we experience different states in response to our environment. However, each of us has one or more worlds that our activities usually center on, and to which we revert when external stimuli subside. This is called one's basic life tendency, established by prior actions. The purpose of Buddhist practice is to elevate this basic life tendency and ultimately establish Buddhahood as our fundamental state. Establishing Buddhahood as our basic life tendency does not mean that we rid ourselves of the other nine worlds. All of these states are necessary and integral aspects of life. Without experiencing the sufferings of hell, we could not feel genuine compassion for others. Without the instinctive desires represented by hunger and animality, we would forget to eat, sleep and reproduce, and soon become extinct. Even after establishing Buddhahood as our fundamental life tendency, we will still experience the joys and sorrows of the other nine worlds. However, these worlds will not control us, and we will not define ourselves in terms of them. Based on the life tendency of Buddhahood, our nine worlds will harmonize and function to benefit both ourselves and those around us. The purpose of Buddhist practice particularly for Nichiren Buddhists who recite the phrase Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, is to bring forth the life state of Buddhahood that illuminates our lives and enables us to forge lasting value from our eternal journey through all the ten worlds.